folks, the Filipina P here, telling it like it is. Today I'm going to talk about love, perhaps the most defining emotion of the human condition. We like to think of love as some ethereal, spiritual, immeasurable force, but get ready for a truth bomb. Most of it really comes down to chemistry, body chemistry. Some people may not want to hear this because it's not very romantic, but it is the truth. A lot of people don't know the nuts and bolts of love and attraction. But if you can't tell what's going on inside you, it's really difficult to make wise choices outside in the real world. Many of us, me included, have done some pretty stupid things in the name of love. But what's really going on behind the curtain? Are there other forces at work that cause us to feel what we feel and make us act in ways that aren't always in our best interest? Hidden actors pulling our strings without us even knowing it. How do we even know when we're not in control? And can it really be love at first sight? Well, as it turns out, the process is pretty well understood. But instead of just listing all the different chemicals and hormones involved, I'm going to cover the different stages of love, what they cause us to do, how they change our brains, and most importantly, how to avoid the traps that Mother Nature set for us. There are three main stages or components to what we call love. There's lust, attraction, and attachment. Each one of these stages can overlap each other or work independently of each other. And some stages never even come into play at all. And sometimes, we can experience different stages with different people at the same time. The first one we often feel is lust. Lust is driven entirely by a desire for sex and its evolutionary component, reproduction. Nature made sure that we lusted after each other, or the human race would have lost the race long ago. Lust begins with that initial spark of physical attraction that may cause impure thoughts to emerge without us actively doing anything at all. These feelings can pop up just by looking at someone, even just by looking at a photograph and it doesn't even need any participation by the other person. And when I say spark of physical attraction, it can literally feel like an electric shock. It's even happened to me. So I can describe it. A tingling sensation, no, not there, that starts in your fingertips when you first touch and radiates through your entire body, causing arousal and feelings of euphoria. When we find someone we're hot for, our brain starts pumping hormones like testosterone in our system, encouraging us to have sex without regard to any other considerations. It's nature's way of binding us and blinding us. But nature only cares about getting us to reproduce. It doesn't care about divorce courts, broken families, and who gets custody of the dog. That's not its concern. Interestingly, the hormones responsible for lust also suppress our critical thinking skills. So here we are, just beginning our exploration of the chemistry of love. And our own bodies are trying to dull our cognitive abilities to get us to do things that might not make any sense the next day. As Admiral Akbar says, It's a trap! In the throes of lust, People with poor impulse control can do some unwise, inappropriate, immoral, or even illegal things. So at least be aware of what your body is doing to you. Next is attraction, which we would call romantic love, infatuation, or obsession. Once we've located a suitable mate, someone who literally turns us on, the attraction phase begins. Dr. Helen Fisher from Rutgers University describes this stage as including focused attention, increased energy, jealousy, and powerful feelings of elation. And we've all seen it. The girl coming home from her date with a new guy, breathlessly proclaiming that she's in love. Mentally, she's already picking out a wedding dress and choosing names for the kids. But it may not exactly be love it might just be the hormone dopamine. Dopamine reacts with the reward center of the brain and gives you a nice little chemical kick of pleasure every time you think of that person, which strengthens the emotional bonds between you. Also, the hormone serotonin is reduced, 
which makes it even easier for us to engage in obsessive thinking. People report being unable to concentrate, an inability to sleep, and a lack of appetite. You might even pass up a promotion at work because you're afraid it'll reduce your time together. When people say they're so much in love that they can't think straight, it's even got a name, love sickness, and it resembles a mental illness because your brain really is impaired. The overriding desire is simply to be in the presence of your mate, no matter what other responsibilities you might have. Not communicating with them can give you withdrawal symptoms, not unlike a drug addict. Because guess what? You are a drug addict. And your own body is the drug dealer. No phony prescriptions at the pharmacy. No visits to dark alleys where money changes hands. Just you and your brain. How's that for substance abuse? And if you're wondering whether this can happen to you in an online relationship, where the two of you have never even met in person, the answer is yes, it sure can. Even love in the digital age isn't safe from developing a nasty drug habit. Compliments of our friend Dopamine and his little sidekick, Serotonin. And finally, we have the attachment phase. During the course of a relationship, our bonds are strengthened even further with another powerful hormone called oxytocin, which is released in large amounts during sex and other activities reinforcing our positive feelings toward each other, also known as the cuddle hormone. It affects our long-term relationships and seems to keep the peace between us. But why? Why would Mother Nature go to all this trouble to cause such wonderful chaos in our lives? She's already used testosterone to make sure that we do the dirty deed. Dopamine to keep us doing it long enough to result in pregnancy. So, why would she just leave us alone? Well, it's so that couples stay together long enough to raise our children in a stable environment that allows them to make it past the dangerous stage of infancy. Now that all makes perfect sense, and we really have to thank Mother Nature for looking out for us like that. But what about a few more years down the road? After all the blushing and love poems and uncontrollable passion, where does this leave you and your mate? the person that you obsessively devoted your life to. Does Mother Nature, the drug dealer, have any more goodies to share? Just one more little fix to keep us happy and in love? Unfortunately, no. For the most part, she's pretty much closed up shop and moved on to another couple that needs her services. In fact, it turns out that the intense chemistry of love that produced all that euphoria dries up after three to four years, leaving you without a drug-assisted boost to keep you focused only on each other. Passionate love does fade. But does that spell doom for love and relationships? Not at all, if you pick the right person. Passionate love can become compassionate attachment and last as long as you both value each other's company and share common interests and goals. Hopefully, those years of intense physical attraction and shared experiences will let you bond on an even deeper level. I mentioned at the beginning that Mother Nature had set some nasty traps for us, great for the goal of finding a mate to reproduce with, but not necessarily for our long-term happiness. One of the biggest of those obstacles is our inability to see reality clearly once our minds have become clouded with love drugs. We tend to see only the good and sometimes refuse to see the warning signs and red flags. If you trust your friends enough to give you good financial advice and they're all telling you that the hot young woman you're dating is big trouble, listen to them. Step outside your body for a moment Take yourself out of your frame of reference and listen to what other people are telling you. That doesn't mean you have to take their advice, but if everyone's shouting that you're about to step on a landmine, isn't it worth your time to at least look down and see where you're standing? Don't get swept away by a hormone cocktail, blind to everything but your emotions. Use the big head to double check the little head once in a while. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with flies. And when you start a relationship, expect your feelings to change over time because like it or not, they will. 
it doesn't mean you fall out of love with someone or regret being together. But the reasons you're in the relationship and what you get out of it will evolve and change. I feel sorry for the younger people, especially in their early 20s, who have no idea of the chemistry of love, who think that they're always going to feel the way they do when that first flush hits their cheek as they become infatuated with the object of their desires. They have no clue what an intricate dance love can be and how easy it is to find yourself dancing to a different beat than the one you started with once the passion fades. And finally, do you believe in love at first sight? Can you actually fall in love with someone just by looking at them for a few seconds but not knowing anything else about them? Realistically, I doubt it. The most you can say is that you fell in lust at first sight. Maybe you were intensely attracted to their body and your brain began pumping chemicals into your system in a desire for sex. But isn't love more than that? But what about someone that says it was definitely love at first sight? We've been together since the day we met and that was 30 years ago. No, I just call it a lucky guess. You were attracted to that person and it turned out that all the other stages fell into place along the way. There's just no way for mature love to spontaneously appear from a quick meeting with someone. It doesn't work that way. It may sound romantic and be a good story to tell the kids, but consider this. If that person you first laid eyes on, way back when, had been covered in mud from where a carabao threw her off its back, you wouldn't have instantly fallen in love with her. You would have kept right on walking, and I don't blame you. Knowing about the chemistry of love, the stages and changes in love, can be your best tool in figuring out what lies ahead in your journey down the road. Safe travels, my friends. And remember, always keep your eyes open behind the wheel. Well, that's it, folks. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll have something new for you in just a few days. Till next time. This is my new boyfriend, Brad. Oh my God, he's so cute. And the moment I saw him, I knew he was the one. Our first date was amazing. And we stayed up all night just talking and looking into each other's eyes. Several months later. I can't stop thinking about Brad. It's like every single thought I have is about the two of us and our future together. And the sex is mind-blowing too. I'd rather die than be without him. One eternity later. Brad and I don't spend as much time together. And the sex is kind of boring and repetitive. But at least we don't fight too much. One winner later. This is my new boyfriend, Greg. Oh my God, he's so cute. And the moment I saw him, I knew he was the one. Our first date was amazing. And we stayed up all night just talking and looking into each other's eyes. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your stewardess making sure you stay in an upright position during the video and guiding you to the exits. The exits of all your worries about life in the Philippines. The captain has asked that you please give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to this channel. And for your entertainment, we have a selection of other in-flight movies for you to enjoy. In the case of an emergency landing, Place your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. Have a nice flight!